So we've talked about geometry and the different kinds of primitives we have access to inside of 3GS. But what if you want complex custom geometry? Well, rather than defining it all by code, you can actually build your models inside of a 3D application like Blender and then export it to a format that can be loaded inside of 3JS. So that's what we're going to talk about in this episode. So let's dive in. First, we need our 3D application. And I'm going to use Blender because it's free. So you can go to blender.org and download and install Blender for free. Once you've got that set up, then we're going to go and install the plugins necessary to export content for 3JS. So here we are on the GitHub page for 3JS. We're specifically inside of the exporters directory, which you can find inside the utils directory. Now, if you look at the folders here, you can see there are a few different applications represented, Blender, Max, Maya. And these are all exporters for 3JS from these applications. Now we're interested in Blender. So if we go inside that directory, you'll see the contents of the directory, but you'll also see the readme file below, which gives you instructions on how to install this plugin. Basically what they're asking you to do is copy the IO underscore three folder into the plugins directory. Now the location of this directory is going to be different depending on the operating system you're on, but they have instructions on where you can find that on your system within this readme file. So we're going to go ahead and copy that folder into our plugins directory. So now that we've got it installed in Blender, we can open up Blender and you can go to File, User Preferences. And what we're going to do is we're going to enable this add-on. So we click on the Add-ons tab and then we can search through the add-ons by just typing in three and you'll see it pop up. And just by checking this box, we'll enable the plugin. So now if it's done correctly, you should be able to go to File, Export, and see an option for 3JS there. So let's go ahead and export it. We want to make sure we have our object selected, and then we can go File, Export, and choose 3JS. Now I want you to pay attention to the export settings on the left here, because these will influence what content is included in your JSON file. And if you're having any problems importing your model, these are likely the culprit. I'm going to change the type to geometry just because I've had issues with buffer geometry loading into my files. And then we're going to go ahead and export our file. So now we need to go into code and we just have our basic scene set up with a couple of lights and a camera. So what I want to do is I want to load this JSON file. So we're going to create a loader using three JSON loader because we're loading our JSON file. And then I'm calling load on it, specifying the file that I want to load and the callback. So then we're going to create our callback and this pulls in two parameters. This receives the geometry and the materials from our model. So now what I need to do is I create a mesh and then pass in the geometry and materials and then add that mesh to the scene and then I'm going to position it further back on the z-axis. So there you can see we have our cube loaded from our JSON file into our scene. Cube is something we have access to as a primitive in 3JS. So let's do something a little more interesting. So I'm going to go back into Blender and delete our cube. And then I'm going to add this monkey head model. Then we're just going to replace the original JSON file we were using. So I'm going to go File, Export, 3JS, and save over the JSON file. So now if we go back into the browser and refresh our scene, you'll see the monkey head. Now, it's hard to make it out because of the material that's being passed in, but we can actually go into our code and replace the material being used by any material available to us in 3JS. So I'm going to replace it with a mesh normal material, which will make the details more visible. So now if we re refresh it, you can see the monkey head in full detail. So this is cool. Now we can create models in Blender and export them and load them into 3JS. But what if we want something a bit more complex, like 
animation. We can do animation and character rigging inside of an application like Blender and then export that to 3JS and run the animation. So let's walk through how we load an animated Blender file into 3JS. Here I have a model already rigged for animation in Blender. So as we scrub through the timeline, you can see the ears wiggling and the mouth opening and closing. Now I'm not gonna get into how you animate in Blender, that's content for a whole other tutorial, but I am gonna walk you through how you get this out of Blender and then how we animate it inside of 3JS. So again, we're gonna select our model and then go File, Export, 3JS, but we're gonna to have to check a few more boxes inside our export settings. It's important to note that there are different types of animation. For example, skeletal animations are one type. We're going to check morph animation because we're morphing the geometry of our model and keyframe animation. And then we're going to check embed animation. Then we can just replace the JSON file that we're loading into our scene. So now let's go back into code. We're going to go in and replace our material with a mesh Lambert material. And then we're going to set a property of morph targets to true. So this is going to tell the material that it uses morph targets. Next, we're going to create an animation mixer. And this is a player for animations on a particular object in the scene. So we need to pass in a reference to our mesh that's going to be animated. Next, we're going to create an animation clip. And this is a reusable set of keyframe tracks that represent our animation. So we're going to call three animation clip and create from morph target sequence. So we're going to pass in three properties, a name, which is an arbitrary string, and then the morph target sequence, which we can get from geometry dot morph targets. Then we're going to pass in the frames per second. We want this running at 30 frames per second. Then we're going to call mixer clip action and pass in the clip that we created previously. So th this is an animation action that we can call methods on like play, pause, or loop. We're going to set the duration to one second and then you can chain this so we can call play on this which will start our animation. So the final thing we need in order for our animation to play is call update on our mixer. So we're going to create a variable representing the previous time and set it to the current time. Then in our render method, we're going to check if our mixer exists, and then we're going to create a time variable and set that to the current time. Then we're going to call mixer update and pass in the amount of time passed in milliseconds, so subtracting the previous time from the current time and multiplying it by 0 0.001. Then we're going to update our previous time variable and set it to the current time. So if we go back into our browser, we can see the animation we created inside of Blender running inside of 3JS. Then you can go back into Blender, change the animation, adjust your model, and then export it again and simply have it running inside your scene. Now, animation goes a lot deeper than this, so I encourage you to play around with the settings, the different kinds of animations you can create and export, and also take a look at the examples packaged with 3JS because they have a lot of different examples of animation types and how they're implemented in 3JS. So this really just scratches the surface of exporting content and animation from Blender. So that's it for my episode on basic workflows from Blender into 3JS. I hope you've enjoyed this episode, and if you want to see more stuff like this, be sure to subscribe. Thanks!